Hello there assassins, welcome back to another Wheel Assassin guide. This is another tutorial and in this one I'll be teaching you guys how to build the Animal Crossing Town Hall and Plaza. This tutorial was actually requested by quite a lot of you guys and I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you uh, for putting me up to the task of building this amazing, amazing in-game creation. Uh, I am a huge Animal Crossing fan myself. I don't play it that often, I must admit, but I do enjoy the game a lot and I think it's such a cool concept and I really must play it tonight actually, that just reminds me. But um, let me give you the grand tour. So walking on up this polished granite pathway up here into the plaza. On the left side of the town hall, we of course have ourselves the notice board. This is actually where at night time you can see an owl sat above here and during the daytime you can see a little birdie sat above here. And uh, you can come up here and see all the island events that might be going down, uh, all the town events that might be going down, uh, birthdays and, you know, announcements that uh, Nook or Isabel have put up on the board, or even yourself. You can actually write yourself a couple of notes on here and stick them on the board as well for the villagers and the islanders to go and check out. Over on the right side of the town hall, we do, of course, have the Animal Crossing logo flag. Uh, this, of course, would represent your island flag, your town flag. So, of course, you can change that as many times as you need to. I tried to go ahead and make the Animal Crossing leaf here, but uh, it was very, very difficult. I had to go ahead, I had to even, not had to, add to, add to, what is add to? Anywho, I had to go ahead and look this up, how to build this leaf. So I will drop the link to that tutorial in the description for you guys. I'll also edit on screen who actually taught me to build that as well, because I can't remember off the top of my head, but whoever it was, I really, really do appreciate your tutorial. It helped me out so much. So thank you very much. I also went ahead and built these Animal Crossing style trees out here. I didn't build that many, only the four here. Um, but I went ahead and just sort of represented what I think Animal Crossing trees would look like if they were in MC over here. Anywho, let's take a look on the interior. Oh, by the way, these are supposed to represent speakers up here on the sides of the town hall. So, coming on up, you've got the grand doors. You enter on in, and on the left side you have the sort of recycling box. This is where all the, in the new one, in New Horizons, you come up here and you can see all the junk or all the um, random bits of furniture and stuff that the islanders have put in here and you can kind of steal it if you want to. Well, not stealing, you can just kind of borrow it for a long time. And then on the right side over here, we actually have the Nook Miles machine and this is where you can order the furniture from, uh, you can actually deposit money and withdraw money from it. You can also, um, what else can you do? Oh, you can start to like, you know, buy loads of different things with your nook miles as well as your bell so it is a great little terminal over here try to represent that as best i could as well so from the terminal we go into the actual workspace of the town hall now over on the right section and on the left section of course where nook and isabel do work we have a little divide in the middle as you can see here um, and on the right side over in isabel's spots let's go through it one by one so over on this little kind of carpeted area. I went ahead and added in uh, the carpet to represent the town map or the island map on here. Over this one, we do have a, have a, like a little clipboard type thing um, or even just the telephone that is represented there. And then you can see the little telephone actual handle at the back here. It's quite hard to build a telephone in Minecraft. So uh, I had to go ahead and use a tripwire hook down there. Then we do have the pot of roses, I think, that Isabel does have over here. And then of course, the little sort of drop down trap door here so you can get in and out of this little workspace in the back right side we do actually have a little chest of drawers like a drawers for keeping files in like a file cabinet type thing and then she actually does have a kettle and a couple couple uh, coffee cups or teacups on the top there as well up there these are supposed to represent just some pictures that isabel does have this right coral one is supposed to represent i think it might be the ocean with some clouds above it and then this left one is supposed to represent like a forested area as well. And then up there is the ceiling fan that she does kind of have facing her desk when it does get hot. So then we have over on her desk, we do actually have a tannoy system represented with this trapdoor. This little baked potato is supposed to represent the hanging bag. It kind of looks like a lost item hanging down the side of our desk. We've got the file cabinet over here. So just some files are stacked up against the bookshelf here, rep represented with a crimson trapdoor. And then the actual files in there. We have a calendar up here, uh, represented with two banner patterns, just to represent the island calendar, what events are coming up that Isabel needs to prepare for. 
and then we actually have a book that she can write down all the little notes in there as well. Over on Nook's side, let's go across here. So this little grey uh, kind of carpet area, that is actually the workspace, so any Animal Crossing person can come up to it and start building whatever construction things they need to build. And that uh, end rod is supposed to represent the little sign for crafting as well. It was really, really hard to build that because it is quite small. And uh, because of Minecraft scale, you have to go like the whole block. And I didn't really need the whole block, so I went ahead and just represented it with an end rod because it's nice and skinny. Uh, and then across here, this is like the mallet or even just a pencil for using on the crafting bench. And then across here, we do actually have some plans of your house renovations. So you can actually upgrade your house just here with Nook. Uh, he discusses with you basically ripping you off so you can get like an upstairs or a downstairs or something like that. So quite, quite realistic, you know. And then up back here, we have Nook's computer, his laptop, a little pen pot just over there. We actually do have a, there's a small little fan in the corner there, which I couldn't represent, unfortunately, because it is quite small. So um, that is my mistake. That is the one thing I missed in here. But uh, maybe you guys can add something in there instead. And then we have a bunch more files and bits and pieces around here as well. And possibly a printer, which is represented with this iron trap door just here. Up on the wall is a whiteboard just writing down anything that Nooks needs to remember. So financial stuff or even just some random ideas. Then a clock, of course, in the central bit. Over here is supposed to represent his photocopier. So this is where he copies his files and you know what a photo photocopier does. And then over on this left side is a little cabinet for storing some paper, boxes, uh, blueprints even, you know, all the crazy stuff that one raccoon needs. So there you have it, the full grand tour of the Animal Crossing Town Hall. Now then, coming a little bit further away from my original build, I've grabbed myself some cut sandstone, some stone slabs, some sandstone walls, spruce doors, smooth sandstone stairs, birchwood planks, stripped birchwood, smooth sandstone, and some brick blocks as well. Let's first of all build our little staircase in the middle of our town hall. We'll place two slabs here, and then we'll go behind these two for two blocks of stone built up with our slabs. Then we'll take cut sandstone, we'll place two over here, and two over here, exactly in line with our stair formation here. On the back two sandstone blocks, we're going to go up for one, two, three, and four on both of these. And then we'll connect them over with just two, like so. Next, we'll take our smooth sandstone stairs and place these upside down underneath those two cut sandstone blocks up above. Then we'll face back in towards the build as if we were exiting the town hall and place our doors on these stone blocks with the handles facing it into one another like so. Next we shall take ourselves our brick block, go out on this second cut sandstone block, so the one in line with your stone stairs, but the, the stone block of the stairs, and go one, two, three, four, five, out on both sides. Perfect. Then we'll take our smooth sandstone, go to the middle three of both our fives, and place the three in like so. Then we'll go ahead and take our strip birch wood. We'll place two just here and two a block away like that and do the same over here. And then we'll finally take ourselves birch wood planks and go one, two, three, four up on both of these and then over in the center like so. We can finally finish that off with a stripped birch wood in the center like that. So over here, let's do the same one, two, three, four and four over here, curve them over by one, and then add in your stripped birch to connect them up like so. Awesome. Now, the next thing we can do with our brick block is go ahead and build this backwards for 14 blocks. So we've already got the one, which is really helpful. So we wanna go 13 back behind this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Then we'll go ahead and finish this up into a square. Drag this one along for the 13 to connect it up to the square like so. That is gonna be our border and our outline for the rest of the town hall. Wicked. Okay, now the final thing we can do today, well in this section, is take ourselves our sandstone wall and go three blocks up from the cut sandstone below next to the slabs down here. 
and then we'll finish it up by placing cut sandstone above each one like that cool now then the next step we will go ahead and use some materials from the last section but going around the side and the back of our town hall we're going to take ourselves our birchwood planks once again our spruce wood planks white stained glass panes cut sandstone once again spruce doors once again stone stairs this time instead of slabs and some spruce wood stairs let's go ahead and stick our white stained glass panes in both of our windows at the front go around the right side from the front of the town hall and we're gonna go ahead and build this so we already made this pillar here which we don't change we're instead gonna bring our spruce wood planks along and right to the end of the building like so then we'll go ahead and add in birch wood planks and we're gonna do this for one two three four five like so now we have five planks here we can go ahead and mark out a window by going two up just next to the five with our spruce wood planks instead place two white stained glass panes here then another two planks just here of spruce and then one spruce above it like so then you should be left with another five blocks that you can now fill up with birch wood planks just to the right of that window like that let's go ahead and finish up this wall with birch planks up until you reach that spruce block just there now we want to go ahead and go around the back of our house our town hall sorry <laughs> our house this would be a very cool house to live in we're going to go ahead and build one two spruce wood planks along and then build this up for another one two like so build over a doorway like that and then build one two three just here place in your door going back in towards our town hall like that the handle can face whichever way you want it to be by the way i think on my original one i put the handle facing to the right but on this one it wants to go left so i'm just going to keep it left let's place a stone stair just here so we can access that back door then we'll bring our planks our spruce wood planks all the way along to that corner just like so now we can finish up this wall with birch wood planks again all the way until we reach that layer we already have just up here cool now finishing up this way we literally do a replica of that side over here so let's go spruce with planks all the way to that birch wood plank just there build your five planks in one two three four five of birch build your window in with two spruce wood planks just here two white stained glass panes there two spruce wood planks here and then one final spruce wood plank above the window like so then you have five of your birch wood planks here in total and then you can fill up the rest around the window to reach the top in line with that spruce wood block just like so that is awesome we can now take ourselves us ourselves i was going to say again cut sandstone and go around the entire top of the perimeter with this cut sandstone just to give it another extra large layer so let's go ahead and just do this now like so brilliant now this actually really helps us out on the inside because we're going to go ahead and build our roof quite flat we want to go ahead and add a little bit of architectural detail on the on the inside so we take ourselves spruce wood stairs go along the inside of the cut sandstone and place these upside down like this so in a big old square curve the corners as well like this and there we go brilliant okay so for the next step we're going to work on the roof we're going to take ourselves some smooth sandstone stairs some cut sandstone slabs some cut sandstone polished andesite stairs polished andesite and then of course some birch wood planks once again let's first of all take ourselves our smooth sandstone stairs go along your cut sandstone as we did with our spruce wood stairs in the inside we'll go ahead and place upside down smooth sandstone stairs on the outside so one two three four and then we'll curve this one in upside down still just before the pillar like so same over here one two three four just before the pillar curve it in upside down like so now we can go ahead and go from that placing yourself a normal facing stair just next to that upside down one like so it's a little bit tricky to place because you kind of want to place it upside down just so it looks right 
but I promise you it'll look better in a second. We can now go ahead and take our cut sandstone and go one, two, three, four behind both of our normal facing stairs to connect them up. Then we'll place two in the middle of the four. We'll place one step here and then one normal step just there. And then finish it off with cut sandstone, uh, yeah, cut sandstone slabs above like so. I thought I got confused then. I was like, what? <laughs> what is it called? I've forgotten. But there we go. That's cool. And then we can take our cut sandstone slabs again and place them one, two on both sides and then along the front and then in this little space as well, like so, just to finish off that sort of temple look to the town hall. Cool. Then we'll take ourselves our polished andesite stairs. We will go to here, so the normal facing ones. Go ahead and bring this back for two on both sides, of course curve this one around and bring it to the end of the building curve this one around and bring it to the end of the building so the ones that are facing normal are just five blocks in length so where you curved in this one the upside down cut sandstone ones uh, smooth sandstone stairs even you actually go ahead and just use normal polished andesite stairs above it like that okay we're getting there now guys we're making good progress so let's go ahead and take ourselves our uh, polished andesite stairs again. Now we want to go ahead and place polished andesite in that gap just there and in this gap just here. We'll place polished andesite stairs facing towards one another like that so the backs are kind of back to back. And then we want to kind of go in a bit of a weird formation for these ones. We kind of have to curve them in like that. So you've only got this very very small amount of upper stair so you can still get up and down it like that. But it's very very small from the front because we want it to connect mostly to this cut sandstone slab at the front okay brilliant let's go ahead and place ourselves two more polished andesite blocks back here behind our normal stairs we'll place a normal polished andesite one there and there and then bring this to the side of the building and the other one to the side of the building as well like so now i know the inside is going to look a little bit hollow at the moment We'll come back and fix that later okay the next step we need to do is a very very weird one we go ahead and take ourselves our polished andesite stairs but we need to go ahead and build this up another layer with these five normal ones on both sides so let's take our polished andesite build that up into like a corner shape like that kind of like a mini l on both of these then you can bring your polished andesite stairs along for the five on both sides cool there was one material I completely forgot and that was just some smooth sandstone so now that I've grabbed that we want to go ahead and come to these middle two polished andesite blocks let's go ahead and build up two just here and two just here like so with our smooth sandstone this is going to be for our clock we'll place a polished andesite stair just here but upside down and one the other side upside down as well then behind that we'll place a block on both of these like so so it almost connects up to the normal facing stairs just here now i must say that these stairs over here the normal facing ones going up for the three layers is the height of this entire build so the three is our kind of stopping point apart from the clock tower now the clock tower to conclude this we'll take our polished andesite stairs we'll go one two three so one overhangs and one two three so the other one overhangs over here then we can go ahead and take ourselves our polished andesite fill in this four block gap and place another two polished andesite stairs just here kind of facing back in towards the roof of the build like that and then to conclude it we place three polished andesite stairs back to back on the top of our smooth sandstone for the clock face like so that is awesome once it's in there that looks really really cool I was very nervous about teaching you guys about that. <laughs> you can probably hear in my voice. All right, so the next thing we need to do is go around to the back of our build. We want to go ahead and take our smooth sandstone stairs and just run these upside down all the way along the cut sandstone. Quite simple. There we go. Then the next thing we do is basically build a normal, normalized version of the roof we made at the front, but on the back. So a very, very simple design. So from the actual upside down stairs, 
the sandstone stairs. You go back in a block of course, so you're on the foundations of the building. Build this the whole way along. Go ahead and bring your polished andesite to connect up the stairs at the front to the back. And then do the same over here. Then build up your next layer. And remember three layers is our maximum height. So as long as you've got that maximum height in there, you'll be all set for connecting to the front. So another layer of polished andesite blocks, then our last layer of stairs over the top, and then conclude it by adding in your polished andesite all the way over the roof like this, even filling in the little hollow gaps down here to connect it up to the back like this. Quite a satisfying job to be honest. Now we'll come onto the inside roof in a second. I do actually have the materials on me to get that done as well, which is awesome. So there we go. Brilliant. From the outside, that looks really, really nice and clean now. Nice and complete, which is awesome. So popping on the inside. Now here you'll notice the roof is looking very, very hollow and it's actually kind of letting in a lot of natural light, which is, is good in a way, but it's also not great in another way because it shows the roof is quite fragile and we don't really want that for Animal Crossing. So we're going to take ourselves our birchwood planks and we want to fill up all the way over our upside down sprucewood stairs like this and then you just want to fill it in so you just build up a giant square on the roof like this filling in every single block so we leave just one space of a uh, kind of open air above this so like loft space i guess where isabel and nook can store their files more file space there we go so it's quite dark in here at the moment but uh, we're definitely going to get onto the furnishings very very soon actually i think we should do that now Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed myself a couple materials. They're actually very important to this Animal Crossing Town Hall. We're going to take ourselves jungle wood planks, polished granite, grindstone, and a lodestone, I think that is. Also an item frame. Now the first step is we're going to go ahead and build these speakers. So we actually take ourselves grindstone, and we're going to go ahead and go to this back slab here that actually holds the ups and down smooth sandstone stairs above it. Place yourself one just here. So the weird wooden parts of the grindstone are facing into the upside down step like so. Not the other way around, not like this coming out of the wall. We want them facing this way, like so. You've almost got like the square part of it just here, the inner square. Sorry, the outer square, that's wood, facing towards the outside of the town hall, which is great. And that also allows us to place, once we're crouched or shift clicked, item frames on the front of both of them, where we can stick our lodestone in like that to make it look like the speakers cool on the inside let's take ourselves polished granite we're going to start from the left corner in the front so come in the front doors and go to the straight left corner down here start on a polished granite block and go ahead and start doing a sequence pattern like this so that none of the same materials ever touch apart from diagonally we do this the entire way in the square so let's go ahead and get this done. All right, well, it's the moment of truth, guys. We're going to be heading inside to finally add some furniture. Let's take ourselves some polished andesite stairs, some polished andesite slabs, an item frame, stripped acacia wood. Oh, I had to think about what I was going to say then. <laughs> acacia wood slabs, quartz bricks, blue shulker box. We're also going to take an iron trap door and some smooth sandstone once again. So... First things first, let's take our polished andesite stairs. Let's go ahead in the back left corner, not the front that we started the floor on. We're going to go over here and place one, two stacked up like so. A block away, place another two. Again, the normal facing stairs, but upside, no. <laughs> normal facing stairs, but stacked on top of each other like so. Then the polished andesite slabs across the top for the three. Then one here to join the two stairs and then one on the bottom to join the two stairs as well. To the right of that, we'll place quartz bricks with a blue shulker blocks on top of it, like so. And then an iron trap door on top of that one, like so. We can next go ahead and take ourselves our polished andesite stairs and place four upside down against the back wall like that. We'll bring slabs out on all four of these for two. And then we have to place blocks just a block away from these slabs in order to place our upside down polished andesite stairs to finish off our desk like that. Remove the blocks that you need to remove. Cool. 
we can now go ahead and take our iron trap door again and we'll use our one other one that we have in this build just here diagonally away from our photocopier like so cool let's take ourselves our item frames place one up in this second lot of uh, desk space so the second countertop away go right up to the top of the birchwood planks and place one item frame here diagonally down to the right place two just here go across the doorway diagonally up from the doorway place another two here go back to the desk area on this furthest desk space away from where we started the second block back in we'll place one just here one just here and that concludes it for that back area like that awesome that is a lot of item frames in one little space <laughs> that's fine let's place ourselves some desk chairs out Isabel's seat goes here in front of our item frame and then Nooks goes over here just besides his sort of printer just there cool okay in the back right corner let's place stripped acacia wood with a acacia wood slab on top like that then we'll go ahead and take ourselves our acacia wood our stripped acacia wood go in line with your windows and this is where we're going to build our countertop so our actual main counter that normally animal crossing characters uh, residents can go up to and that is kind of the point they have to stop they can't go any further than that apart from in new leaf where you could become the mayor that was pretty cool so let's go ahead and stick them a block away from the windows all the way along here and then stop a block away from this window over here place yourself an item frame back on this left side one two and on third block back in on the third block back in sweet okay that is awesome I think we're about ready apart from the sandstone to grab some more materials so the last thing with the sandstone is you go ahead and go to a block in from the wall here just place three so that is on the left side of the door over here blocking on both sides so blocking from the window blocking from that window perfect okay apologies if I do end up you know missing any materials in my hotbar I do this quite a lot but I have a very very short memory like I feel like a goldfish some days so if I do forget any materials, please, please forgive me. Okay, let's grab some more materials. So next, we'll take ourselves an acacia trap door, an end rod, a grey piece of carpet, a sea pickle, brown carpet, white carpet, blue carpet, light blue carpet, and a weighted pressure plate, the iron one. Let's go ahead and take our acacia trap doors, place them on the ends of this acacia sort of stripped wood area here so we'll go ahead and place one just here preferably with the actual latch facing towards the acacia more than towards the windows just so they fold down nicely against the exterior wall let's start from the left and work along let's take end rods and place one there grey carpet just here a sea pickle at an angle just facing towards our DIY area just here brown carpet there white carpet there we'll also place ourselves white carpet just behind our iron trap door just for some more files or something just there we'll also go ahead and place ourselves whilst we're in the area a weighted pressure plate in front of nook's chair for his sort of keyboard of his laptop then we'll leave a space on the acacia uh, bench here just here place yourself normal blue carpet light blue carpet and then another iron pressure plate just there cool so now taking yourself a poppy a flower pot actually two of these a baked potato, a book and quill, two banner patterns, a clock, an oak sapling, some tube coral, and some iron bars. We'll now go ahead and complete some more of this. So, our flower pot goes here, with our poppy in. That is on Isabel's side of the uh, sort of town hall, on the right side. We'll place ourselves another flower pot, just here, diagonally away from that iron pressure plate for Nook's sort of pen pot. We'll place ourselves a baked potato down here, for our sort of lo lost item looking thing. A book and quill in front of Isabel's chair for her little work diary. Two banner patterns in these ones up here to represent a calendar. A clock up here to represent, I'm not sure what, um, a clock. <laughs> then we'll take ourselves an oak sapling and place one just here. An angle more sort of towards the door. So you might have to sort of wing it around a little bit until you reach diagonally away to the door like so. Tube coral on this one then iron bars above the tube coral for our ceiling fan, like so. So then next we will take ourselves birch trap doors, yellow carpet, paintings again, stone stairs, 
smooth quartz slabs, bookshelves, crimson trapdoors, white banners, and an oak button. Let's first of all make the recycling area over here. So we'll place ourselves a birch trapdoor in the center like so. Fold birch trapdoors up the side of this smooth sandstone block like so. Then place yellow carpet in the gaps like that. Now we're going to go ahead and build paintings up here. The painting we want is a 1x2, so it covers two blocks just like so, and then a 1x1 just here. But I know for a fact that we're going to have to break some blocks in order to place these. I'm just going to break a couple up there for now. So I'm going to place myself the one with the creeper face on it if I can get it. If in doubt, I'll just use the one that looks similar. So this one, perfect. Because it is a blue painting with a nook over here, I'm pretty sure, we want to go ahead and make it as realistic as possible or as in-depth as possible. So this one, I'm going to go for the one that looks a little bit like a sunset. So that one, perfect. Okay, now I can go ahead and replace my yellow carpet with birchwood planks to fill the rest of that back in. Awesome. Okay, so going back into the actual workspace area. Let's place ourselves another painting, but this one goes on the stone stairs just here. So the stone stairs goes back facing towards Nook's chair, and then our painting goes on there for the screen. Now you can put anything on the screen, it doesn't have to be a particular painting, so I might just leave it like that one. I'm going to place myself a birch trap door just here behind Nook's flower pot, well his pen pot. In the same row, I'm going to go back to the wall and place myself a bookshelf with a crimson trap door folded up against it like so. Two white banners go to the left of that for our whiteboard. Then we'll place ourselves an oak button down here on our quartz bricks. Finally, take yourself a smooth quartz slab and place it here next to your white carpet and your bookshelf to conclude Nook's space off like so. And we've also finished off Isabel's area as well, apart from one little sign in the corner. Now then, to conclude the inside of our town hall, we will take ourselves an acacia sign, green concrete powder, chiseled stone bricks, light blue stained glass panes, an item frame, cut sandstone slabs, birch trap door, and a jungle sign as well. Now for our acacia sign, let's jump into Isabel's area back here. Place yourself a sign just here, and we're going to go to the first and third row of our sign placing ourselves just five dashes, like so. Then we'll drop down to the third, place these five dashes again, just to represent handles on our file cabinet. Now going back out into the actual public area, we'll go ahead and stick ourselves green concrete powder a block away from this window, with a chiseled stone bricks above it, like so. And then above that is going to be our cut sandstone slab to conclude the machine. Now we go ahead and take ourselves birch trap doors, and we actually fold the handles in to each other like so. We do this for both sides, like that. Then we'll go ahead and stick ourselves an item frame on the front on the chiseled stone bricks with a light blue stained glass pane in it like so. And then finally, taking yourself a jungle sign, plonk it on the front of the green powder, go to the first line of the sign and place five of these dashes to represent a little sort of receipt uh, printer or something like that on the front of the thing. Awesome. And there you have it, the inside of the town hall now completed. Time to work on the exterior. All right guys, so this is normally the stage in the video where I'd say, thank you for watching part one, see you at part number two. But because this is actually quite a small um, build outside of the town hall, we may as well just finish it up today by building the plaza, a couple of trees, and then of course the notice board and the town flag, or the island flag in this case. So let's take ourselves some polished granite some oak wood planks, some jungle wood planks, some smooth stone, some birch fence, green wool, spruce fence, spruce wood slabs, and some spruce wood stairs. First things first, let's mark out our plaza. Let's go to the right and left sides of our town hall and go top, kind of from the front corner, going back until you reach the fifth block. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then we'll go into the floor here and we'll build along for nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Fill that in with your polished granite like so. Do that on both sides. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll build this in for the nine. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, wonderful. So before we go any further with building our plaza, let's mark out our town flag just with one smooth stone block. So go to the right side, go to this corner once again. Instead of going back and up, we'll go just right next to it along four, two, and then three is where we'll place our smooth stone block above the ground like so. Nice one. Let's go back to our granite and build along from here. So not counting on our nine, we'll go to here and build down for 27. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, and twenty-seven, like so. And then you should be able to run this along. Get up in line with your other side, and then go ahead and build this twenty-seven along here like so. Cool, and now just kind of stop once you reach the 27th one and go straight into a square like this. All the way along the front and then back up the right side over here to connect up to our nine at the top there. Nice one. Okay, now before we finish, we're gonna go ahead, go to our 27 long things now. Well, they're actually 28 if you count this top corner as well. We're gonna go, go start on our 27 one, so here, and we're gonna go town until we reach about 11 and 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So these two. Let's go ahead and dig this out until we reach, let's go for five at the moment. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like so. Let's go in line so that we can go to the other side and build a five. One, two, three, oh, four, five, like so. Cool. Now then, the next thing we need to do with our polished granite is we're going to go ahead and mark out some more spaces for it. We'll go to the ends of our fives and we'll basically knock out two more to make it a six long shape. Now from the six, you go up for three and down from three, four, three even, and do that on both sides. One, two, three, one, two, three, like so. Now then, at the top, we go directly next to our three here and we go one, two, one, two, and one, oops, one, two, until you hit the building like so. Let me just fill in that grass again. Okay, so the same over here. So we knock out two directly next to the three, but only one of the two is connecting. So we go one, two, one, two, and one, two, like so. Three lots of two to connect to the edges of the building. And now it's been pretty much the same on the way down. We're going to go ahead and go for one, two, three, four, five, and six. Lots of these two though. So one lot of two, two, three, four, five, and six lots of those two. Over here again, the same. One, two, three, four, five, and six, like so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and connect these along just by ending a uh, sort of longer trench in here. And then I can actually look at the uh, the main town hall doors and knock out two blocks that I know are going to be directly in line with it down here. Now I want to bring this up for a total of nine blocks. So we've already got one for these two, two, three, four, five. Then we count six as this one, seven, eight, nine, like so. And then we stop right there. Fill that in just so we don't get confused. Now what I'm going to do is go up to my ninth one. And I'm going to go up for one, two, three, four, five lots of two on both sides. Again, connecting just the one to this area. So one, two, three, four, five, and the exact same over here. One, two, three, four, and five, like so. And as you'll see, it's in line with that one there. So we can go ahead and bring that one across to build it into like a, a big old circle and a circumference in the middle. Now then. We need to do the same up here, except this time we're going to go ahead and put one block here down from these uh, cut sandstone blocks. Then we'll go for one, two, three, four lots of the two. So directly next to this one, one, two, three, and four like so, and they'll be in line like so. So one, two, three, and then the four like so. And then all we need to do now 
is cut out the middle section to make this one equal to 9 and that one equal to 9 over there, same as we did here. So let's count from the beginning. We already know this is 5 going up to here. Then it goes 6, 7, 8, and 9 like so. Do the same over here. 7, 8, 9 like so. Awesome. And now all of these spaces we can go ahead and fill in with our polished granite. Okay, so before we fill anything else in other than our polished granite, let's drop down to here, add in a block there, and one here. And then we'll do the same over here, just to connect them up to that nine row, just like so. So the two lots of nine there. Cool. Let's go ahead and take our planks now, both types of planks. Let's go to here, so these two little segments here next to the town hall. Let's cut out this corner and fill it in with oak planks, then jungle, then oak, then we'll do jungle just here, and then we'll do the last two jungle back here in the corner, and the rest with oak like so. It's the exact same over here, just of course the other way around. So two jungle in the back corner, a sort of weird snake pattern like this going up there. I actually went ahead and made it slightly different on my original one on this side, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and do that one for now. Then we'll do the corner of jungle, corner of oak, jungle again, and ending on oak like this. Now we'll do the similar thing, just going down here and here. So we'll do the corner of oak to start it, the jungle, the oak again, the jungle once more, the oak, and we do this until we reach one jungle in the corner down here. And we start on the corner of jungle just here, and do the opposite of what we did a second ago, going back up this way. So nice and simple, which is always nice. Let's just go ahead and just add in this. Oops, put my polished granite back in. There we go, like so. You don't have to use the same materials as me, by the way, guys, but I thought this looked the most unique and the most like the Animal Crossing Plaza. So if you guys have anything different you like to use, of course, go ahead and do that as well. Now let's go ahead and cut out the perimeter of this almost circular shape in here. Oops. Only the edges if possible. Like that. And then we'll fill in the edges with jungle. My jungle just want to go above ground for some reason. <laughs> so like this. There we go. Then we'll go ahead and do an entire row of oak around this new perimeter. This new circumference of our very square looking circle. So de definitely right next to our jungle planks, we just do the oak. And then you guessed it, we fill in the rest of it with our jungle. So we cut out this grass area and we fill it in with jungle in a little while. The reason I'm not going to do this straight away is because I'll let you guys fill in the jungle all together. Just so it's much easier and then we can all do it at the same time. So let's leave that plain for now, but we're going to fill that in with jungle in a moment. Let's cut out the rest of the jungle areas so we can do it all together. So let's go around this perimeter with our oak, not connecting on the corners. So you don't put like an oak here to connect these two, just leave them diagonal like so. All the way around this strange shape. This is the only corner you connect up to here, and of course that one over there. And then these two back here. Cool, and that's going to be some jungle as well. Over here is the exact same thing, so we don't connect on the diagonal corners. We just leave them very much diagonal, nice and pointy, nice jagged edges. It gives us that sequenced pathway design, which is really, really cool. So let's bring our oak all the way around to outline everything going to be within this space. And then we'll do these two the exact same way. So go ahead and outline with them with oak for both of these. So now I've outlined the final spaces for my jungle. Let's go ahead and fill these in with jungle with planks. This one, this one, this top left, top right, and then that middle plaza area just there. Wow, that is really looking amazing, guys. You're doing an awesome job, by the way. Let's go ahead and take ourselves our birch fence. Go over to your smooth stone block on the right side of your town hall. And build this one up to seven blocks high. One two, three, four, five, six. Oh, close, seven. Then we'll go ahead and add in two green wall just beside it, and then another two just here 
to build like a four block shape in total. Nice one, we'll come back to the actual flag later on. For now, let's go to the left side of our town hall. Go to the first granite block here, next to the building. Don't build on the oak, but build on the jungle here. Place yourself one, and then we'll go for two, three, spruce fence like so. Start on the ground, but not actually on the ground, just the uh, the base level of our um, fence here. We want to go ahead and build this along for three with our spruce wood slabs. Then we can build two layers of jungle wood planks for those extra six blocks in total up there. Then we'll go ahead and start to curve in some stairs here, like that on the end. We'll build it along for the three, and then we'll curve it back around here for the other pole that holds up the fence, the worthy well, signpost, like so. And then we'll come back to fill in the details of that later on as well. For your notice board, take three item frames, scatter them about the board like this, and then pick yourself white banners, banner patterns, paper, anything that looks like a note to you, and just slap it in the item frames, whichever way around you want it to be as well. Now then, we're probably onto the hardest part of building the town hall. It is, of course, the banner part. So we need to build the clock and also the town flag and the Animal Crossing logo over there as well. So we'll take ourselves a loom, it's three white banners, one green banner, a stack of green dye, a stack of white dye, and a stack of black dye, as well as a banner pattern called Thing. Awesome. So, once you've done that, open up your loom, go ahead and spread out your white banners in your inventory, take your first white banner, plonk it in, then take your black dye, plonk that in. We will go find the black fess, which is this horizontal line that runs across the middle of the banner. Now we can take that out and put it back in. Replace our black dye with our white dye. Then we go ahead and find the per pale, which is just this one here. So we actually slice basically half of the banner off and half of this horizontal line off with white dye here to replace it with what it was originally, which is of course a white banner. So this left half of the banner is now white again. So we can go ahead and take that out. Then we want to go ahead and find the inverted one. So the white perfess inverted, which is one of these two. So I'm pretty sure it's that bottom one. Like so. Yeah, it is. So it chops off half of the banner at the bottom to make that a very, very skinny line there for our minutes hand on our clock. So there's one of our clock banners done. Let's stick that in our inventory, maybe on a hot bar right at the end. Okay. So now taking our next white banner, we plonk that in. And then we go for our black dye again. We're looking for a black pale. Now then, the black pale is just the vertical line that runs directly in the center, going up, so from the bottom to the top uh, on the white banner there. So now we found that, we can take that out and go back and grab a black fess, which we know is the horizontal line, this one just here, to make it almost like a medieval type flag here as well. So we take that out and then we plonk that back in, take our black dye out and put our white dye back in just here. Now we want to go ahead and take in a white perfess inverted. Now we know that is probably this one down here. Just double check. It is. So now we can take that one out and put it back in. And we also need to grab ourselves a white per pale inverted, which is of course one of these side ones. It's probably that right one. It is. Awesome. So now we actually have the hour and the rest of the minutes hand there as well. So let's go ahead and put these on our town hall. So the small little line there goes on the left one. And then the bigger of the two goes on the right for the hour and the minutes hand, just like so. I'm not really sure what time that is. That's a very, very odd looking time. But um, let's say about nine o'clock, I, I think. If, if the hour hand was in the center, that would have been great. But it was so hard to build a clock there in Minecraft. Now to build the Animal Crossing looking design here, the actual logo, uh, I actually got some inspiration from a Planet Minecraft user by the name of uh, Neko Jason, I think. I am so sorry if I'm pronouncing that completely wrong. Please, if you do see this video, feel free to shout at me in the comments. But um, if you want to go support them on Planet Minecraft, guys, I'll drop the link in the description there so you can go and check them out as well. They've got some crazy ideas about stuff as well, which is awesome. So, next thing we need to do is get our white banner again. So, back on our loom, plonk in your white banner. This time, take your green die, and then we'll go ahead and basically want to make this. Then we need a green roundel and a green thing. Now the green roundel, super perfect, is just a circle. Super easy to understand, awesome. Circle in there, keep your green dye in, but this time place in your banner pattern as well. 
to make the leaf, which is of course the actual thing, kind of like a notch apple. So we go ahead and take that out, and there we have it. We have the Animal Crossing, New Horizons, New Leaf, any other Animal Crossing game there is, <laughs> the actual logo up here. So we stick a green banner just here, nice and plain, then a white banner just here with our logo on, on the right side. Oh, look at that, looking beautiful. Okay, on to the final thing, which is just the trees if anyone wants to add them. So to be completely honest with you guys, the trees are actually super easy to make, they just look a little bit more confusing than they are. So we take oak wood and some oak leaves. We go ahead and build two in a square like this, just two lots of two next to each other for a four block square. We build this four block square up by about three layers in total. Oops, try and get my wood to be the same way, there we go. Then we'll go ahead and add leaves across the top for like four lots of leaves. Then we'll go out on two at the front and out two on the back, like so. We'll go ahead and build the front two up by about another layer and then a third layer like so. Exact same on the back, like that. Now these four blocks in the center, let's go ahead and build these up for three from what they already are. So one, two, three, all four of these, like so. Now we just go ahead and tear it down. So two goes out here. We build this four cluster out, basically another block from our two up there. We add in two here. Then we drop down here and we build a corner. So we place one there and then we place two underneath it like so. And then we just build out these two here and those two there. And then we finally add in two here. So on the back, we go ahead and do basically the exact same thing. So we go one, two, three down there. Go to here and build the sort of corner thing that we made. We need to go ahead and add a long here and do the other side. So we'll go one, two, three down from these ones, like so. Add in our two for our sort of corner bit there around what we did originally. Do the same here. And then just go ahead and make this 3D. So two here, the four cluster comes out by two layers and then we add in another four lots of uh, one to make that into a nice square tree. And then finally, your last lot of four on the side there, like so. One Animal Crossing tree. It's not as confusing as it might seem, but if anyone does have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below. And well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching my tutorial. I really, really do appreciate it. I appreciate the fact you've got this far into the video and not got sick of my voice yet. Well, you probably have, but you're carrying on because you're polite. But <laughs> thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. I was trying to end the video on an Animal Crossing style skin, like using an Animal Crossing style skin, but I couldn't find anything that represent Animal Crossing in the best way that Minecraft could, which was kind of sad. So we do actually need to start a petition to get Mojang to make us an Animal Crossing style skin pack where you can be Tom Nook, rip people off, be Isabel, be really nice to people. It's just going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Let's start that petition in the comments down below. Hashtag get Mojang. That's a bit too large. Okay. Hashtag Minecraft Animal Crossing. Let's do that. Awesome. <laughs> but if you did enjoy this one, please be sure to drop a like. That'd be epic. And if anyone actually does want to consider joining the Assassin Hood by subscribing, it is 100% free. And as you can see behind me, I have tons and tons and tons more tutorials to come in the future. So yeah, definitely stay tuned if you can, that'd be wicked. Please go and check me out on my social medias, links in the description below. And if anyone actually knows of anyone who is a huge Animal Crossing fan and you know they'd like this tutorial, please 100% send them my way, that'd be epic. But in the meantime guys, Take care, have an excellent rest of your day, stay safe, and I will see you at the next Willy System video coming very, very soon. Goodbye for now, everyone. Thank you once again.